So let's start with proteins. So here on the slide you can see the structure of an amino acid. Amino acids have two distinctive functional groups. They've got the amino group at one end and then the carboxylic acid group at the other. And then the R group is the bit that is variable. In the human body, there are 20 different amino acids, so 20 different variations of R. You'll also notice that the amino acid is made up not just of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, but also that it contains a nitrogen. Now, just like our carbohydrates and our triglycerides, proteins are made by joining amino acids together using dehydration synthesis. That's removing water. But this time, what we're going to get is a peptide bond. When we join two amino acids together, we call the result a dipeptide because it's two. If we join three together, it will be called a tripeptide. Now, some dipeptides exist naturally in our bodies, but there are also some that are made artificially. One example of this is aspartame. Aspartame is a chemical sweetener and it's a dipeptide. But because it's not natural and it's not found in the body, it can have some negative consequences. And one of those is it's a neurotoxin. It excites brain cells, it makes them overexcited. And this can lead to side effects from aspartame in certain individuals. One of the tripeptides that exists in our body is glutathione, and this is used to make various antioxidant enzymes. Glutathione is a tripeptide of cysteine, glutamate, and glycine. They're joined together by dehydration synthesis, and there's two peptide bonds in there. Now, within that recipe for that particular tripeptide, it's the cysteine that is normally the limiting amino acid. What we mean by that is it's the amino acid we tend to have the least of. We have an abundance of glutamate and glycine in our diets, so the amount of cysteine limits how much glutathione we can make. Therefore, one of the ways that we can support people's antioxidant defences is to increase their consumption of cysteine-rich foods. And that includes things like legumes, beans and pulses, sunflower seeds and eggs. They will help the body to be able to produce more glutathione. So here I've got a representation of a polypeptide, a protein chain. Each of my beads is a different amino acid. So within the human body, we've got 20 different variants and each of these variants has different properties. We have amino acids that can act like acids, releasing H+. We have amino acids that can act like a base, binding onto H+. And they will behave differently at different pHs. So when a protein chain is created, what's going to happen is it's going to fold up into a unique 3D structure. And what determines that structure is the different amino acids in the chain and their position. Now that structure is also affected by what conditions the final 3D shape is in. So if we imagine that this red bead here is an acidic side chain. At a certain pH, that acidic side chain wants to be in the middle of the protein. It wants to be hidden. So our protein folds up in a particular configuration where that's hidden. Let's imagine the pH changes and now that red amino acid wants to be on the outside. What will happen is our protein chain will unravel to allow that to interact with the solution and our protein changes structure. That's something called denaturation, the protein unfolding and unraveling. And we can see that in action in a ceviche. So you take raw fish and you squeeze over something citric like lemon juice and you can see the structure of the fish changing. It goes from being soft and translucent to being firm and opaque. That is the proteins within the fish going from one 3D structure to an unraveled structure and therefore changing in appearance. So ceviche looks like it's cooked the fish but obviously the temperature hasn't actually changed. So this method of prepare, preparing fish doesn't actually kill any of the parasites that are contained. It just denatures the protein and changes the structure of the fish. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe below so you don't miss any future content. To learn more about CNM or its courses, head to www.naturopathy-uk.com.